Welcome back, everyone. This is Frank Tamora, and I'm going to be answering uh, a comment that was sent to me over YouTube on my YouTube channel. Jehovah's Witness uh, made a comment about what I had put up in the, in the past week or so. So I want to take this time to address that issue, and hopefully that this Jehovah's Witness will see the truth as it pertains to the Word of God in black and white. Now, as I said a day ago, uh, this person by who goes by this YouTube uh, name, uh, this is what he wrote. He said, Jesus had to come in the flesh. And the JWs do believe that. Well, obviously, the JWs don't believe that. I'm going to show you now is because when the Lord Jesus Christ resurrected from the uh, grave, he was given a glorified body, flesh and bones, and even Jesus made comments about the flesh and the bones that he had. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses say that he materialized a body to prove that he came back, but that's not resurrection. That's lying about the, the true situation, and I'm going to cover that. It says, And he goes on to say, Otherwise, how could Jesus have paid the ransom? Uh, that said, how could he come back from the dead in the same body? Wouldn't that be taking back the ransom? If Jesus had returned from the dead in the same body that he had been, uh, been born with as a human, then why wasn't he recognized instantly by the disciples and followers? And then he gives a couple of verses here showing this. And uh, one of the verses that he gave is in 1 Peter 3.8, where he says the spirits can appear in human form. Right? <clears throat> so what I want to show you is what, first of all, what the word of the Lord says in 1 Peter 3.18. It says this, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Didn't say he came back in a spirit. He was quickened by the Spirit. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They believe that this is a, a satanic doctrine. Uh, they don't understand the concept of the Trinity, obviously, based by the word of the Lord. Now, the word Trinity isn't found anywhere in the scriptures, but when you read the full text of the Bible, you'll see that the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost are not three different gods. They all are the same person working in different relationships depending on uh, where they are at the time. For example, Jesus Christ as was always with God in heaven as God. We know this from the scripture. But he emptied himself out, as it says in Philippians, to take the form of a servant, even until death. And this is what uh, we saw through Christ, who came on earth the first time to reconcile the earth. Uh, not only the earth, but obviously the people living on the earth, taking the sins of the world on himself so that we might have access again into heaven. He became the second Adam. Now I'm going to address these questions up here. So if you're a Jehovah's Witness, please pay attention. I'm going to be using the word of the Lord to show you what's going on. So it said by the Spirit. It didn't say in the Spirit, but by the Spirit. So Let's move on. Luke 24, 39. Behold, now this is Jesus talking. Behold my hands and my feet. That it is, look what he says, I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see I have. So he tells him right there, flat out, he's not a spirit. And so your first comment, what he says here, is in direct contradiction to what the Holy Word says when Christ said he was not a spirit, he didn't lie. It, I mean, if he was lying, if he was telling the truth, he would have said this, Behold my fake hands and my fake feet, that it is a, a fake image of me. Handle this fake me and see, for I am a spirit that have not flesh and bones. He would have said something like that. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, 
But the Lord didn't have to say anything so deceiving because he was, in fact, exactly who he was on the cross. He was Jesus Christ, the same Jesus Christ with the same holes in his feet, the same holes in his hands. And that's why he showed the disciples so that they would believe that it was the same Christ. You have to understand, the disciples, uh, they didn't understand fully the resurrection of what Christ was going to do until after he rose from the dead. So they were in shock when they saw him. Now, in John 10, 18, it says this, No man taketh from me. He's talking about laying down his life for mankind. This is Jesus talking. But I lay it down of myself. Now, get this. I have power to lay it down. In other words, he had the power to let people kill him. But look at this. And I have the power to take it again. What does that tell you? That he had the power to raise himself from the dead. Now, this commandment have I received of my Father. So, as in the fullness in heaven, he had the power to be able to do things when he died. Now, when the Lord died, what happened? Did he just dissolve in the gases like the Jehovah's Witness doctrine teaches? No, he didn't. The first thing he did, according to Ephesians, is he went into the heart of the earth to leave or to set the captives free. So when the Lord's body was, was crushed, if you will, on the cross for all mankind, he immediately, when uh, he died, went into the heart of the earth to fulfill that prophecy, and he brought people that were waiting for, for the Messiah, uh, he brought them into heaven. So uh, Jesus Christ, although his body died, the Spirit lived on in the form of God. Now, the JWs cannot understand just how Jesus could be dead and raise himself again. There are many things hard to understand. But to say God did not raise himself as he promised he would, it's rejecting flat outly, if you will, rejecting the truth. Now, take a look at this. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, it says this. And when I saw him, now this is John, the youngest apostle, looking at Jesus. We see this in Revelation. I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand on me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Now these are specific titles to Jehovah God. Right? The first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. Look at that. And behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and death. Now, the first thing I want you to take a look at is, since we know that these are titles to Jehovah God, my first question to you who asked and made a comment on my YouTube channel is, when did Jehovah God die? Right there. Well, Jehovah God died as in the form of the man, Jesus Christ, on the cross. That's exactly when he died. And you can't, you can't strip Jehovah God of these titles because these are titles directly to Jehovah God. Now, in Revelation 22, 12, and 13, those two verses which I'll cover, uh, it says this, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. So, in other words, in the beginning of this sentence, we know that Jehovah God is coming. And he's going to give a reward to those people, obviously, who have been uh, sealed in Christ and been waiting for the blessed hope of his coming. Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Now look at this. Exclusive titles to Jehovah God. He says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So without a doubt, we know that Alpha and Omega... The first and the last, of course, these are Greek titles now. The first and the last, specific titles only to Jehovah God. Now, the Watchtower Society, I want to read something to you that was taken from the Zion's Watchtower, and then it said three. You could look this up yourself. You can copy and paste it if you want or take a picture of it. Go to your library. Look this quote up because this is right straight from the Watchtower Society. 
If we are following a man, undoubtedly it would be difficult with us. Undoubtedly, one human idea would contradict another, and that which was light one or two or six years ago would be regarded as darkness now. So what they're saying is, when we say something, it can't contradict itself. It has to stand in light. But with God, there is no variables, and neither shadow of turning, and so it is with truth. Any knowledge or light coming from God must be like its author. It can't change. It's got to hold. It's got to stay. A new view of truth never can contradict the former truth. And I totally believe that because if you know the word of the Lord, it can't change. Even Malachi says, I, the Lord said, I change not. New light never extinguishes older light, but adds to it. Now, you're going to find out this is exactly what the Jehovah's Witnesses have done. They've come out with this new light, and they're so confused, they don't even know what one, the left hand is doing from the right hand. And I'm going to show you in a second. And so I'll let you read the, the rest of that, but I gave you the meat of this, is you cannot change uh, or alter what God has shown us. You can't contradict it. Now, to prove this, let me show you something here. This was taken from the Watchtower magazine, October the 1st, 1978. Now, if you think that I'm uh, working for Satan, the Jehovah's Witnesses always say that you're, you know, people who want to show them their own material to prove them wrong, they call them that they're working for Satan. So, if you're that afraid of the truth, uh, you're in really deep trouble, but I'm showing you your own Watchtower writings. So what do you have to be afraid of? Now, Satan doesn't want you to have this information, that's for sure, because when you see the light, uh, you would have to question, if you're really seeking Christ, you would have to question everything the Jehovah's Witness organization is teaching you. So the October 1st, 1978 writing, they teach about who Jesus Christ is. And if you'll notice, they talk about Revelation 22.12. You're going to see it here because in this article of the 78, 1978, they're showing you that Jesus Christ, that revelation, these verses pertain to Jesus Christ. Look at this. Also, in the final revelation concerning the things that must shortly come to place, Jesus again stresses the suddenness with which he comes. So, he is going to come. Who's coming? The Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. These are the qualities, characteristics, and names specifically for Jehovah God. Yet the Jehovah's Witnesses are now saying that Revelation 22.12, as you can see it here, is referring to Jesus Christ. So how in the world can a Watchtower society say that Jesus Christ is not Jehovah when they're clearly showing it Right here in Revelation chapter 22, verse 7 and 12, they're telling you that this is Jesus Christ, the first and the last, the one who was coming. He is God Almighty. Now, look at this. I want to show you. This is from October 22nd, 1978. This was obviously later, but I'm going to show you the earlier writing now. And this is, again, from the Watchtower Society, your own people, your own false prophets, your own unlearned people who distort the scriptures to their own destruction, as was uh, warned to us by Paul the Apostle. Now, who is the Alpha and Omega? And notice, they're talking about the same verse again, Revelation 22.12. Let me scroll down here so we can get this in its full context. I'll start here. Then, after the quotation that begins with Revelation 22, 12, and ends with the words in verse 15, move it up here, we find the statement, I, Jesus, sent my angel, Revelation 22, 16, and since the context does not necessitate are attributing the words of Revelation 22, 12, and 13, neither to any angel or Jesus, they could have originated with another speaker, constant, constant with the rest of the book of Revelation. The Alpha and Omega must be the Almighty God. So here we go. In an earlier date, 
They're telling you that Revelation 22 is not Jesus Christ, it's Jehovah God. They say it right here. It must be Jehovah God, the Almighty. Okay, so if God was working with these people and they were true prophets, do you think that they would have had this much confusion when they said the same verse that now Jesus Christ is the Alpha and Omega? The first and the last, the Almighty God? Well, obviously, the Awake and the Watchtower magazines have a major, major problem. Or otherwise, the Watchtower Society has to conclude that both Jesus Christ in Revelation 22.12 here and in Revelation 22.12 here in a different magazine are one and the same. Jehovah is Jesus Christ. That is the only way that the scriptures could uh, not cause confusion and hold intact is a truth. Now, let me go down a little bit to show you that the Watchtower Society has changed and altered every place, uh, by the way, where Jesus is shown to be Jehovah God. Now, let me show you some other scriptures to show you how Jesus Christ cannot be uh, just a God. All right? Let me show you something here. And I'll talk about this a God issue in a second. Isaiah 44 6 says this. Now keep in mind, this is Jehovah God talking from the Old Testament. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and the Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. So there you go, the title to Jehovah God. Right? So again, ask yourself, well, why is that title holding for Jesus Christ? Because he is Jehovah God who came to earth and hung up on the cross for us and died for our sins. Now, I know that this may be hard for you Jehovah's Witnesses to comprehend and to really take in, but this is the gospel truth. This is coming straight out of the Bible. The first and the last. All right, now look at this, because this is super important. That's why I put it in red. I am the first and I am the last, and besides me there is no God. So if the Jehovah's Witnesses have made Jesus Christ just an, another God, which means there's more than one God, that scripture in the Old Testament here negates that teaching. So that teaching comes from Satan. It didn't come from God because there is no other God. There's only one true God that I'll show you here in a second as well. So out of the mouth of Jehovah God, he says, besides me, there is no God. Now, I'm going to skip a little bit and show you that the text of the Bible that has not been altered by the Watchtower Society, and there, uh, there are people who do not know how to translate anything, the, the people who supposedly translate the Greek text, in John 1, 1, it says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, when you read it this way, you understand that Revelation 22, 12, there's no conflict there because the Word is God. The Word is Jehovah God, who became flesh, and dwelt among us and to fulfill prophecy. So, now I want to show you, uh, this was taken from the Jehovah's Witness Bible, the Greek... Uh, Greek interlinear that they use uh, Charles or, uh, Manti, Julius Manti's work, the oldest living Greek scholar back uh, around the 1978 when I called uh, the scholar and had a, a talk with him about his translational work that the Jehovah's Witness Society used to try to prove that Jesus Christ was a God. Look at this. This is from their text. In the beginning, the Word was, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, and they put, a God. Now, that a God does not belong in there. Look at the Greek text. And God was the Word. It says it plainly right here. This is Julius Manti's work that they distorted. Now, I wrote Julius Manti. And as a matter of fact, when you scroll down, uh, when you get into my website, when you scroll down, there's a link here that you can click this link. And when you click this link, this is going to take you to a, 
uh, informational packet that I put together for you giving you all the information about Julius Manti and all the fraudulent work that the Watchtower Society has done and they've been covering it up for years. And this is one of the cover-ups right here because without checking the original text of the person who wrote it, the Jehovah's Witnesses will never understand or realize exactly who Jesus Christ is. He is not a God. Remember again, the God said himself, there is no other God besides me. Zero right there. And besides me, there is no God. So to say that Jesus is a God, again, you're, you're uh, making the scripture null and void. So let me go up a little bit more. Isaiah 41.4, who has performed and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first and the last, I am he. Again, just reinforcing the scripture that Jehovah God is Jesus Christ because Jesus holds the title to I am the first and the last. Now, just in case you don't know, Alpha and Omega is the Greek language for the first and the last. So this shouldn't have any problem. It's the, it means the same thing, the first and the last. Now, in Revelation uh, chapter 1, verse 7, it says this, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who have pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn uh, because of him. So, I want you to think about this. Since Jehovah God holds the title of Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, and the Jehovah's Witnesses teach that Jesus Christ never rose again from the dead, but that he is just, they believe that his body turned into gases, was sucked up into Jehovah's memory. That's what they teach, which is ludicrous. That means that if Jesus doesn't exist and Jehovah God is coming back, follow me on this, just like Revelation 1-7 says, then if the Jehovah's Witnesses believe that it is Jehovah God coming back, then the Jehovah God has been pierced. Now how in the world can you pierce Jehovah God? You know when that happened? Well, obviously it happened when Jesus was resurrected. He resurrected from what? From being pierced on the cross. It was Jesus Christ who was, who was pierced. It was Jesus who shed his blood. And Jesus rose himself from the dead. How? Because he was God. He was able to do this, whether you can understand it or not. That's exactly what happened. And if you don't believe that Jesus did this, you're calling him a liar a fake, a deceiver, and he is a false god. And you've been worshiping and following a false god. And if that's the case, you're living in sin. And believe me, if you're living in sin, you're on the road to hell because without the uh, receiving of the resurrection, your faith is in vain, the Bible tells us, and you're still in your sins, which means you're on your way to hell. All right, so look at First John 5.20. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. So he's making a distinction. This is John talking, making a distinction between true gods, false gods. And they're showing us that he is the true God. Even in his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God the and eternal life. All right, so we know that there's only one true God, that is the Lord, uh, God, Jesus Christ, Jehovah, because they're one and the same. Now, in James 2.19, it says, Thou believest that there is one God, not two gods, like the Jehovah's Witnesses are teaching. You can see it right here. Jesus is a God. You can't get around it. Polytheism, more than one God, and yet, Millions of Jehovah's Witnesses have fallen into the trap to believe that Jesus is a second God. This is satanic teaching. And of course, again, this, came, this translation came from people who were proven in court. And you can see this when you go right to here on my website and click this. It was proven in court that they had 
perjured themselves. They couldn't even translate one word, one sentence in Greek. All right, so again, very, very important. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou dost dwell. The devils also believe and tremble. So you better believe that there's only one God. There are not two gods. And if you're worshiping another God besides God of the Bible, you got to figure out which one you're going to worship, which one's true, the A God Jesus or Jehovah God in heaven. Because one of them is a fake. And if Jesus Christ is a fake, that means everyone is still living in their sins, including the Jehovah's Witnesses. But we know that the Word of God stands as it should have stand without somebody changing it. God, the Word, was God. God visited us on this earth and died for us. And so I had to put this in uh, red because this was a major distortion. And again, as I said, every place where the Jehovah's Witnesses see that Jesus Christ has made Jehovah God, they've altered it. Now look at this, 44.6. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and the Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. So we know who's talking, the Lord, Jehovah. Look in the Old Testament, you'll see that this is Jehovah's name. The Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Again, the title, so he clarifies who's talking there. The title to Jehovah God. And besides me, now look at this, there is no Savior. No Savior other than Jehovah God. And Jesus Christ is our Savior. So now we got a problem, there's two Saviors. Which one are you going to receive? Which one is the true one? Well, obviously, for the Jehovah's Witnesses, there's a major problem. Like here, it's a God. You got two gods. Now you got two saviors. But do you understand what the Bible is showing us? The Bible is showing us is the Savior of the world is Jesus Christ, and He is Jehovah God, just like He promised He was going to send Himself uh, to to be a, a sacrificial lamb. Isaiah forty three eleven. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Okay, again, this is what he says. So who are you going to believe? The Watchtower Society who tells you that there's two Saviors and two first and two last and two Alpha and Omegas and two gods who created the earth when the Bible's, and I didn't put this up here, but the scriptures also tell us that Jesus, uh, God, is the only person who created everything. And anybody that didn't create everything is going to perish. And obviously, in the New Testament, you could see it in Corinthians or Colossians that Jesus Christ created everything. And there wasn't anything that he did not create. But the Watchtower Society, just as they changed this Greek, they also added, changed all or created other things. That word other doesn't even appear. And again, you'll see that in this link that I provided for you. So another falsehood from Satan. Now in 1 Timothy 2.5, there is one God. Again, edifying what I've already been telling you from what God has spoken to us about one God. Now, there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Look at this, the man, Christ Jesus. Now, in the Watchtower teachings, the Watchtower teaches uh, that Jesus Christ never came out of the grave, like I said. They teach that his body was dissolved into gases and sucked into Jehovah's memory, all right? And the man, Jesus Christ, never came out of the grave. That's the teaching of the Watchtower Society. But yet in the scripture, the truth, the real Bible, the one that has not been tainted by Satan, says this, for there is one God and one media between God and the man, or and men, the man, Christ Jesus. So after the resurrection, keep in mind this is some time after Jesus rose that Timothy wrote this. And what does he say? Does he say all the dissolved gases? of Jesus Christ who are in the remembrance of Jehovah God is our mediator? No. He says, just like it was
the man Christ Jesus, the man that was on the cross, the same man is our mediator today. He's not here on this earth. We can see him, but the spirit that he told us that he was going to send, the third person of the Trinity, doesn't mean that he's another God or the third person. It's just he's working uh, with us on earth in a different capacity as the Holy Spirit. That's all it means. Not three gods. There's one God and three persons. Personages working as the, one is the Father, one is the Son, and one is the Holy Spirit. Not three gods, not two gods, just one God, all in the same. Now, Isaiah 43:10, Ye are my witnesses, say the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was, get this, no God formed. Neither shall there be after me. So if the Jehovah's Witnesses teach that Jesus Christ is a God, like I've proved to you right here in their own text, and the Lord tells us point blank that no God was formed after him, that means that the God that the Jehovah's Witnesses are pointing to is a fake. He has to be. Otherwise, Jehovah's Witnesses, you might as well throw this text out too. But see, in the real Bible, the one that hasn't been distorted, there's no problem at all. Because God, who formed the world, and Jesus Christ, who made the world and created everything, like it says in the Old Testament that Jehovah God did, they're one and the same. And God didn't make Jesus Christ because he was always there with them. He was in the deity. And so if the Watchtower Society wants to keep their teaching uh, about Jesus Christ as a God, then you spit in the Lord's face and you call him a liar. Neither shall there be after me because there was Jehovah God and obviously According to the theology of the Watchtower Society, God would have made another God as Jesus Christ and he would have changed. Do you understand what I'm saying here? He would have changed his word and we know from Malachi, the Lord said, I changed not. And even here, as I showed you before, in the text made by the Jehovah's Witnesses, it can't counterdict. The Lord will not counterdict themselves. Well, this is exactly what the Jehovah's Witnesses have done. They're counterdicting scripture left and right. And the people that are in the Watchtower Society are living in fear, so, so much fear that they will not challenge what the Watchtower Society leaders tell them. And everything that they're being told is being distorted from the scriptures, from their text. Now look at this. Genesis 126, and God said, let us make man in our image. This is before Jesus Christ came, right? Well, you're seeing a close-up of the personages of the triune God. Not three gods, but God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Make, let us make man in our image. Whose image? Well, obviously in the image of God. And who's that? Who came to earth? Jesus Christ. After our likeness. Didn't say after my likeness, but after our, plural, likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish. And then he tells you all the different things he's going to have dominion over. But the fact of the matter is, in the meat of the material here in this scripture, and the truth, the truth of the scripture is showing you that there is, in fact, a trinity and uh, there are more scriptures than this, believe me, that shows that Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit are one. Now look at this in Colossians 2.9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, when Jesus Christ was in heaven as God, he emptied himself out. 
to become a servant. That's, that's what we see in Philippians. I believe it's in Philippians chapter 2, where Jesus emptied himself out to become a servant until death. But when Jesus died and he rose again, he went back into heaven and he again, he received and got the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So he became what he was before he left heaven in his complete glory. Watchtower Society, the leaders, and now all their people they're teaching cannot conceive of this because they're believing in two gods and one of them's false. Now in John 10 verse 30, uh, chapter 10 verse 30, I and my father are one. He tells them point blank in Jesus chapter 1 and John verse 14, and the word was made flesh. Who's the word? The word's God and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Of course, now Jesus has his complete glory in heaven, the Godhead bodily. His glory and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, I've given you some other information that you can connect to if you're Jehovah's Witness. I know that you're probably... Uh, very concerned. You should be very concerned because what I'm telling you is just a microcosm of what I have gathered for the for a seven year seven year documentary search on the Jehovah's Witness uh, cover ups, lies, and distortions. And if you don't believe me, read your own material. It's all over there, all over the material. You're loaded with false prophets. They started with with uh, Charles Russell. He hated the doctrine of hell, so he changed the Bible to meet exactly how he wanted it to say it. Now there's some other information that I have down here for you that you can scroll down when you get to my site. And uh, just read it, and take your time reading it, and if you have any other questions, feel free to email me. I'll do whatever I can to show you. Now there's one thing that you're going to have to realize. The doctrine that I bring to you is straight out of the Bible. The Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you that I am I'm an apostate. I was never uh, I was never a Jehovah's Witness. I studied with them for a while, and when I learned about these false prophecies, when I learned that they would not even let me ask questions, I left the organizational teaching. I was never baptized as a Jehovah's Witness. I wanted to get out of their teaching before that ever happened. And the Lord made that possible by re letting me get uh, my hands on all these false prophecies, the false prophecy dates, and everything else that I finally got when I did the seven-year research. So, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, you ought to be deathly afraid. You ought to be afraid of your own Watchtower Society because the people behind or the person behind the Watchtower Society is Satan himself. And he has mistreated uh, the Lord's true children for many, many years since Charles T. Russell had came out with this false doctrine and started to call people who left a, a rotten organization filled with false prophets, they were calling them apostates, but they're really the true Christians who are divulging the truth behind what Satan has done to the Watchtower Society. And there's time to change. The Watchtower Society can change. That means repentance of what they did and what they said and have to alter it and let people know. You have to set things right. Repentance is first before forgiveness. This is Frank DeMore with the End Times Research Ministry. Again, if you have any questions, email me and I'll do my best to give you those answers. God bless.